Hi, I'm Ron Hellman, Education Technology Consultant from Kent ISD and the Director of REMC8 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm going to share with you a website that a lot of teachers don't know about, but it's going to be very helpful for you as you transition from in-person teaching, your normal classroom, to some sort of distance learning. I know many of you have been asked to come up with new lesson plans and packets and electronic delivery, and many of your files that you might have are trapped someplace or you're just trying to figure out, okay, how do I put all this together in the next couple of weeks to make sure that my kids can at least stay where they were or progress. So this website I'm going to show you does a whole lot of things, and I think you're going to find it very valuable. So here we go. Okay, enough of the suspense, right? So the website is ck12.org, and what we're going to be looking at in this video are what are called Flexbooks, and Flexbooks are free digital textbooks that you can customize, um, and create your own localized version of a textbook. So you can mix and match your own personal content that you have maybe out of your Google Drive or someplace else and create an electronic textbook that you can then put into uh, Schoology, Canvas, Google Classroom. You can just share the document with somebody as a PDF. And speaking of PDFs, because I know a lot of you are gonna be tasked with creating electronic packets for students that don't have internet access or device access outside of school, uh, this is really, it's a fantastic feature, right? So you can download a PDF and print that and then provide it to your students as a packet. So it is both electronic and has the ability to download as PDFs, which is pretty great. Again, knowing the inequities that we have between our students in some places versus other places, and etc. Other things that CK12 has are really, they're pretty slick if you're on the electronic side of things is you can take any of the activities inside of it and automatically assign those out to Canvas, Schoology, or Google Classroom. So it's got some great integration into those things. It also has some simulations. Uh, the simulations are physics and chemistry simulations and concepts. In addition, they've got a set of interactives for math and science called PLIX, which is Play, Learn, Interact, and Explore. And then finally, this isn't really finally, but they've got a lot of adaptive practice assessments inside of it as well. Um, so kids could use these assessments on any device. So we're going to walk into the course. I'm going to show you just a couple of real basic things. And then I'm going to give you some resources at the end where you can learn more on your own. So I don't want to turn this video into, you know, half an hour long thing. Because this is a quick start guide, I just want to walk you through some top level things that you might need to know. And then after this, we'll share some resources where you can do some self-learning. So with every website that we go to, there's always a teacher version and a student version when we start thinking about academic things. So you can certainly explore both versions of this and take a look around. Student version gives you good insight to what a kid might see if they're going to be using this on their own. And the teacher version, which I'm in right now, this allows you to start creating your own textbooks or assign different things out of all the different activities that they have. So if you click Explorer and start looking around, you're going to get really, I'm going to say, kind of lost in this. And when I say lost, I don't mean like in a bad way. It's got some fantastic things in it. Uh, just one thing that I would probably have you look at really quick when you first get into it is just take a look at Flexbooks. And inside the Flexbooks, you'll be able to dive and see, are there things in here that you would use in your classroom? So don't go too far you know, down the road and you teach a particular subject that it isn't included in a Flexbook and you're like, there's nothing here for me. So just be aware that it does cover certain areas. It's not a do everything website. So with this website, the first thing that you wanna do is if you haven't created an account here, is click the join button and sign in with your Google account. Uh, it makes things a whole lot easier than trying to do it by email and new password and you know all that. So I'm gonna click sign in and sign in with my Google account. Once I do this, it'll take me to my dashboard and my dashboard are all the things that I've worked on recently. I'm gonna dive into another piece here. So library and inside my library, these are all the books that I've already created and perhaps published and given to um, other people or given to students. So in the library, I want to point out something really key here before you start diving in to add content into a book. There are two different kind of books, Flexbook Textbook and Flexbook 2.0. If you know you're going to have students that are going to be receiving packets, that means that it might be a PDF that is printed and delivered out to their bus stop, you want to choose 
when you create this, if you choose to create these, Flexbook Textbook. This one does provide you options to create an electronic version of your textbook. Flexbook 2.0 does not have that. This is more um, keyed toward a lot of interactives and more modern things, I would say, when we start thinking about the year 2020. Modern, I mean technology on the internet wise, interactives and such. So Flexbook Textbook has the PDF version download in it, and this one does not. So I'll show you real quick in my new science textbook that I have that I created that I have this version to download as a PDF. So once I click that button, after I've created my book, it'll say, here's your notification, you can download it. There's also another thing here too for your students. There's a thing called Offline Reader. This would be also presented to your students if they're signed in in the student view. If you click Offline Reader, this will actually allow them to download this book onto a non-connected device. So that would, they'd have to have access at least once to the internet, download the book, and it would be on a device. It'll ask you for some permissions to save this file to a Chromebook. So there are, there's a little question mark where you can actually read that and read more about it. So let's just talk about my book here real quick. So this is my book that was created just by me exploring different subjects out on the website from other Flexbooks, some of the Flexbook 2.0 pieces. But I've added those into my custom book. So what does this book look like exactly? So I'm going to dive right into my table of contents and go look at what is science. So science, this was created already. It's got another, um, it's got a summary. It's got a bunch of table of contents to it. And it kind of just takes you to the next piece as you click through these things. So these are already done for you. There's a ton of activities in here that your students can already do. So a lot of this is reading. There's explorations with videos. Um, there are vocabulary words. In addition, throughout the whole entire site, you can assign these things using Google Classroom. You can give them practice exams or assessments if you would like to have them do this. Um, the other thing that's really interesting about these Flexbooks, um, I mentioned the PDF piece. So I'm gonna go back to my new science textbook. Um, I downloaded it. And we'll see where it ended up here for just a second. Okay, downloaded my PDF version. So here's my new science textbook. You're going to see that I'm actually added as an author, which is kind of fun. And the whole entire table of contents that you saw in the electronic version is now in the PDF. So if I had this on a Chromebook or um, any other electronic device, I can click these and it'll take me right to this electronic version of the the textbook. Now obviously that um, navigation won't work if this is on paper, but now you've got a paper version of this whole entire textbook. Um, you have to be aware of one thing though is when you create a paper packet you may want to trim down the size of these to something a little bit more manageable. This one ended up being a hundred and forty six pages. Well, this is my book because I've got eight chapters in it. You're probably gonna uh, narrow this down quite a bit more than that. So that's this PDF now, I think that's kind of a neat part too. So if you had a Google Classroom as an example, um, inside of your classroom, you could say, here's my digital textbook. Uh, I'm gonna view this material real quick and say, okay, I've got a digital textbook. I'm gonna edit that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that file that I just downloaded of my, my textbook. And I'm gonna upload that thing into my Google Classroom and here's my description that I have in Google Classroom. Here's my textbook. If I click on it, it'll just open up in a new little window for me as a student. So now I've got a copy of that. This is downloadable and I mean, you can use it in lots of different ways. So let's save that thing. So now this becomes inside of my Google Classroom. Here's my digital textbook. So there's a lot of different ways to use CK12. Here's what I would have you do once you do a little exploration here through the site use their help menu. And their help menu has a ton of things in here. For example, if you're a teacher or a parent trying to use this thing, it'll walk you through how to do all the different things that are listed um, in the table of contents here. And there's a lot of things. For example, how to create assignments for Google Classroom, how to share it to Canvas or Schoology, all those integrations that they have. So it's a great place to start. In addition, I'm gonna take you over to the CK12 YouTube channel for just a second.
if you just search for CK12 Foundation in YouTube, you'll find their channel. On the front page currently, they've got a video called School Closure, How to Teach Online and Learn from Home. This is a webinar that they did um, about three weeks ago or so. That's almost an hour long that walks you through in more detail all the things that I just kind of introduced you to. In addition, when you go look at their videos or their playlists, inside their playlist you'll see um, some quick overviews that they have, how to use the platform. If you look at all of their different videos that they have, you'll be able to see that they started to do, this is very recent, um, how to do all the different things inside of CK12. So I would really recommend this if you are again in that position where you've got to rapidly start coming up with some content for your classes, for your students, and to be able to share with them. It's probably one of the best resources I know right now to be able to rapidly come up with content for your distance learning plan with your students. As always, if you have any questions about education technology, things in general, or you just need some assistance or bouncing ideas off somebody, please feel free to reach out to your local intermediate school district, for example, here at Ken ISD, our education technology consultants, or your regional education media centers or REMCs in the state of Michigan. There's a whole huge amount of people that are here ready to help every single day to make sure that you're meeting the needs of your students and we're meeting the needs to help you as teachers and our community.